so this is the handbag uh, that I was just fin finishing up the long strap for and thought um, since there had been so many questions with regard to um, edge stitching and uh, edge coating, gluing, things like that, uh, I would just put a little um, video together about how I do it. So um, probably is not going to end up being a really short video like because that's the way I do things. Um, but yeah, I'm going to show you exactly how I do um, or how I did this strap. So uh, hopefully it helps you. And if you have any questions, just ask. So normally I would use this Teflon mat. Um, it's like the ones I use for uh, pressing uh, because everything comes off of this glue, um, edge coat, that kind of stuff. So this is what I've, where you're at right now <laughs> in my studio. And I'll just back you up here. Sorry, it's a little bit shaky. But so this is my setup um, for where I do my leather working, uh, my edge coating, um, gluing, all that kind of stuff. I have my press kind of, uh, it's not nailed down or screwed down or anything, but um, I've got some supplies and uh, storage underneath there and stuff too so and it's a nice stable surface to work at so um, so this is where we're at so normally like I said I would have my Teflon mat but um, I'm gonna be working with black leather and you won't be able to see it so what I've done instead and this works just as good is um, I just have a piece of parchment paper sitting here so um, the parchment paper as well, um, glue and stuff like that comes off of it very easily. So, so what I wanted, and now these are just random measurements. This is just what I have decided. This is what I want for my adjustable strap. So the finished length of the long one, I wanted it to be 40 inches. So what I have to start off with is a piece that's 80 inches long because I don't want to have, um, raw edges at both ends. I want to be able to slide my um, hardware onto this and sorry I'm not sure if I was in the camera there or not. Um, I want to just be able to slide my hardware onto that and I'll show you that in a minute. The other piece is um, I want it a finished 10 inches long so of course that has to be 20 inches long. I've also cut those pieces one and an eighth inch wide my finished piece is going to be one inch wide and I'll show you why I add just a little bit extra onto it. Um, it helps. I always try as often as I can um, to have, I guess, a contingency plan in place. So if something doesn't work quite the way I want it to, um, I can trim, uh, even out things. And that's really important in this. So I'm showing you what I know or what I have learned. Um, now this hasn't specifically been taught to me. Um, I have um, someone who is helping me with some stuff, um, but I don't have any formal training, so understand that. I haven't taken classes on this. I'm just showing you what works for me, um, and maybe it'll help you figure out what works for you. So again, um, it's like all of my stuff, I show you, I show you uh, what works for me, but I'm not saying that the way that I do it is the only way. It just, um, that's what works. So, and plus, I'm here doing some videos for you, so showing you what I know and hopefully it can inspire you to uh, branch out a little bit, however that works. So, so this is what I have. Um, I'm going to start off with this first piece of leather. This product is, um, well, it, it isn't actually the, the Cordura brand, but it is a Cordura type product. Um, Cordura is mostly what you would see for making um, duffel bags. So it's got nylon on one side and a waterproof coating on the other side. So it's just nice and strong um, and works well for what I want to do. Because this is leather and it will stretch, and these are straps that I'm making, um, what I do is I end up gluing some of this Cordura right inside here. Where I'm going to get to is I'm going to have my hardware is going to slide on here. So I'm I'm actually what I'm the idea is that once this is all in, this actually folds all over. So I'm getting a really good strong 
um, hold here so that this doesn't stretch. So first of all, I'm going to glue the Cordura in. Then eventually, I'm going to um, glue the two together. So as you can see, this is one inch hardware. And what I want to do, what I want to accomplish, is I want a one inch strap. So I'm going to, when I glue this together, I'm going to trim my edges because I'll never get these glued so that they're absolutely perfect. Uh, and you'll see once I have it done and I trim it, it's a perfect edge. But the issue is up here, I'm still one and an eighth inch. So, uh, and I can't, I'm not gonna cut around that and look, have that look very well, very good. So before we even get started on anything else, I'm just gonna trim back just a little ways on both sides. So probably I'll do about an inch and I'm gonna try and get that nice and centered and, and even so that this will fit on there nicely. But for now, my first step for both my short strap and my long strap is going to be gluing this Cordura in. Now, what works for me, I use, um, the products that I'm using for my leather work are Tandy products. I'll let you know if, they're, if it's anything other than that. Um, I have this in a bottle. Uh, it makes it really easy to dispense. It comes in a, in a really large bottle. It's called EcoWeld. So, I mean, it comes in smaller bottles, but I bought a little bottle and I went through that so fast that it made sense to buy the bigger one. So this is a water-based contact adhesive. It works like contact cement, only it doesn't have the smell. So it's really, really easy to use. It's sticky and um, it can be a little bit messy, but that's why I have my um, parchment paper or my Teflon mat, um, whichever one. I like to use um, a palette knife, like you would buy at an art store. Um, they're nice. I get glue all over it and I can just wipe that glue off of there. Uh, you can use popsicle sticks too. I've also got popsicle sticks. Um, I just find that the angle of this is nice for spreading. So what I'm gonna start off with is I have to do both of them. So I'm just gonna put a little bit on here. And yeah, this is messy. It just, that's the way it is. Well, I didn't have to be that messy, but. <laughs> and I'm putting this on the waterproof side, just happens to be. I can take a little bit more off of here. It doesn't soak in on this waterproof side either. This does come off very easily off your fingers. You can use gloves if you want as well, but it's already starting to tack up. And this stuff, I mean, you, you wanna work a little bit quickly with it. It tacks up really quickly, um, but it can almost be dry, um, just like contact cement. And you wanna get this place the first time because uh, you can pull it up if you don't um, press down too hard on it. So I'm gonna center this and I'm gonna stay just a little ways away from the edge here. And that's all there is to that. That is, that is stuck down. I'm going to do the same thing on the long strap, and uh, but I won't I won't do that on camera. So I'll just go ahead and do that myself. So I'll just show you really quick. Now I've I don't know if you can see it, but there's a bunch of glue on here, and if I do this right away, well actually it doesn't matter. It, it can be completely dry, and I can do this too, but a little easier with a Teflon mat because it doesn't hole and stuff like this but um, you can just get this right off right away and then it doesn't 
stick anything else down to. And I was just thinking to myself, I wonder how many people are out there um, when <laughs> they watch my videos and I forget to do something, whether people are actually talking to me saying, oh, you forgot to. <laughs> well, what I forgot to do um, before I have the glue and everything on. So what I'm doing is I have a little, little, just a little piece of mat here and another piece of um, paper, of my parchment paper, so that it doesn't stick down. This side, of course, my edges are still kind of sticky in that. So, and if you have, I've got a little bit of glue here. So I'm gonna just, I can rub that off right now fairly easily, especially off of cowhide. Um, I was working the other day with some goat skin and it's a lot more porous and it was a lot harder to get the, um, the glue off of it. So, so here, this is what I'm, this is what I have. I'm going to switch this around so I can have a better angle at it. I just want to be able to uh, trim that little piece in the edge out or in the, like right in the middle. So I can figure out approximately where my center is. And I'm looking at actually over here because I have an inch and an eighth. So I'm going to go halfway in between that eighth inch mark and try to remember where I was. trim that off after. So now here's where I really want to watch. So I want this exactly on my one inch mark. And I'm just kind of veering in and out. So now I have this should be exactly an inch. So now this piece of paper is pretty much garbage because it has a big hole in it. I can use it for other stuff, but take this away. And now I'm ready to actually do the whole thing. Um, I want to watch a little bit with my glue that I'm not getting too much in here. This is my halfway point. And actually I'm just going to mark that. Yeah, I guesstimate a lot, so. So that's approximately where my um, hardware is going to be. So now I've got half dried glue on here. So I'm just gonna get that off of there. This is such nice stuff to work with. Because it's not solvent based, um, it's really, really quick cleanup. It comes off your hands really easily. And there's absolutely, there's no smell. Oh, and look what I, <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> I said I was going to be careful in there and now here I wasn't. So now I have to deal with that. Yeah, it just means that my hardware will stick and it won't, it won't swivel in there. So there we go. Now, while that's tacking up a little bit, I'm going to put my little swivel clasp on here carefully. Try not to stick anything together. All right. So 
So here I am. Okay, I am going to try as carefully as possible. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to line up my edges. Oh, yeah. Like I said, until you press down on it, you have half a chance of it coming apart. But so there we go. And I've got some glue on the outside and I'm going to try and get that off as quickly as I can. And I have what they call a laminate roller. Now this is, <laughs> uh, this is hardware kind of stuff. Um, from, it's something that you would, that people that do uh, hard, uh, laminate countertops and stuff like that, they would have this roller. I can just put pressure on it and get glue on it too. This just feels like a whole show of bloopers right now. <laughs> anyway, all right. So now I have this all, this is all stuck down. Um, and I'm just gonna set that aside and do the long strap as well. I do have, um, it actually did not too bad even where I put glue when I didn't really wanna put glue on there. But, so there's half of that. That's one step in this. So I'm going to try and show this to you. I know I have to be a little bit careful if I get too close then it ends up uh, going blurry on my camera here. So um, this is where I trim back a little bit and my edges are really uneven. Well, not crazy uneven, but I've, I've trimmed back a little bit further on one side than the other. Um, my sides, I can't get it perfect. Um, it's just not possible. So. Um, and there's there's a little bit of glue on the edge, all that kind of stuff. So um, so this is what I, I have right now. So again, this is about an inch and an eighth wide. So now I'm going to do my final trim. Going to go right from the top here where I've already done um, that little trimming. So this is exactly an inch here. And I'm going to, I want to give myself a little bit on each side to trim off. So um, I can tell on this side as well through my ruler that um, I have a little bit to trim off there. I've got this edge here. I've, I'm trying to line it up so it's as even as possible right now. Of course, that's a little bit sticky. And I'll have a little bit up here just to trim, just to get looking a little bit nicer. I'm gonna flip this over. And now I'm gonna be really careful to line my ruler up all the way across. Remember this can shift back and forth, so make sure if it's, if it's bent a little, or uh, cr a little bit crooked, tuck that in so that you've got a nice straight edge all the way along. And there we go. And again, I have just a little bit up at the top here. To even out. Again, I don't know if you can see this as well as I can. Um, this is just a, a perfect edge now. Now it looks like it was always supposed to be that way. So, um, so what we've done is, is we've allowed for the fact that there's no way that we could take two pieces of leather and uh, glue those together so perfectly that now when we edge coat this, it's going to look like actually like it's one piece of leather. So that's what we're looking for. Um, I'm just going to even up. I can see here I just need to use my sharper scissors and, uh, and get in there a little bit better and trim that off. Then we are going to edge coat. I'm going to do the exact same thing with the long piece as well. But um, <laughs> all of this demo just to show you how I use glue and edge coat. So um, I'll be back with that. So this is the product that I use. Um, again, I am very new to all of this. Um, this again is from Tandy. Uh, Phoebing's um, 
edge coat. <laughs> this one is black. Uh, so far, black is the only one that I've been using. I know our local one carries it in black and brown. So um, I did a brown purse the other day and I did black edge coat on it. So, and I was happy with it. So it looks good. Um, so this bottle, um, for me, it's a little bit cumbersome to try and dip stuff into the top here. So all I have is just another little pot, um, wider mouth on it, a little more, a little shallower. So this is what I'm going to show you. You can put gloves on for this, but um, it washes off really quite easily. So, so I've got the edge here. Now I've got this all nice and trimmed. It's all flat. Everything is just really, really perfect. The idea of this little tool is it just rolls. Once this thing gets kind of coated, um, it's really easy if I just take um, my awl or something and just clean out the grooves. It takes very little time. These are the two tools that I use. Um, I have heard of using um, kind of uh, cotton, um, like a swab kind of thing as well, like a sheepskin swab. Um, whatever works for you. I find this works pretty good. So I'm just going to show you how this one works. So just it's really quite easy. It, it's nice and thick. It doesn't, it's not goopy and, and gross. And let's just hope I can continue on. I normally don't make much of a mess, but then um, I've been having some struggles today. So, so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to run this on this edge. There's not, there's not a lot of science to it. Um, this stuff drives quite quickly. It, uh, if you get a little bit on, the edge. I kind of missed with my thing here. Um, all you have to do is, is wipe it off. It's, it's easy if it's wet. It's really easy just to wipe the edge off a little bit. And I just go along oops, and give it a good coat. The first one uh, tends to soak in quite quickly. The little grooves in this roller, they just kind of hold the, um, the edge coat in there. So you get a little bit more on at a time. I like using the roller for the first coat, but it does kind of leave a little bit of a, I don't know, I call it a train track. Um, there's a little bit of a um, texture to it. So that goes in pretty quick. I'm gonna just go, Sorry, I don't do a very good job if I look through my camera too much, but if I don't look through my camera, I can't tell that you guys, what you guys can see and can't. So I'm just going to, I'm going to set this down for right now. I'll finish this after. So up at the top here, I've got raw edges. And I'm going to want to coat those as well. I've got a little bit of glue on here, that kind of stuff. I could have edge coated this probably before I glued it together, at least this little little part right here, but um, it's not that big of a deal just to, to paint that up after, or I don't find it is. I haven't used it, but um, there really wouldn't be any reason not to be able to use this on cork or vinyl as well. Um, those little spots where, if, especially if you're, like with vinyl, where you have some raw edges, and um, is, especially if your backing is light on black, that looks terrible to me. Um, some people use Jiffy Marker. Jiffy Marker, from what I've heard, uh, does tend to come off on other things. So to me, I just, I can't even imagine um, doing a custom purse for somebody and, um, and putting, you know, having them pay good money. And I've done edges with Jiffy Marker. So, um, so that, so I've got that up at the top. Now this can, this same method can be done. This is how I started off before I even bought that other little, um, that other little tool is just with, with this. 
it doesn't hold as much paint at a time but it does work as well. Especially for the first coat where it really soaks in, that other applicator is really nice because it holds quite a bit more. You get a, you get a heavier coat on for your first one. But for the second coat, where I really don't want any texture to it, I want it really as smooth as I possibly can, um, I actually prefer using my awl. And if I think I've gotten any, yeah, I had a little bit. No big deal, get it off now. And it sets up very quickly. Um, going into my second coat, um, this isn't going to be dry enough right this second. Uh, I'm going to have to leave it for a little bit. But it kind of, um, you might end up with a little bit of kind of, sh not sharp edges, but fuzzy edges. And I just take a little a nail file or an emery board just an old one. This one is is really smooth, like there's not much grit to it at all. And, and I just give it a really light, just to take any of, it's like sanding, um, you know, sanding a finished product, project. You put on a coat of uh, varnish, let it dry, and then just give it a really light sand just to take those edges off. This stuff does set up really quick. I'm hardly using any pressure. I'm just using enough pressure that it actually is making a sound. That's about, that's about all I do. And like I said, this stuff sets up really fast. It's great to work with. So I'm just going to go ahead then. Going on the second coat, And you can put as many coats on as you like. So I'll put another coat on the other side as well. And then I'll determine whether I want to put an, a third coat on or not. So um, it looks really quite nice to me. I'm going to, of course, I'm going to touch up up at the top and stuff. But um, so that's that is what there is to edge coating. Um, it's really straightforward and simple. And it makes a huge difference. I think it's just... Anything that we can do to um, make our little finishing touches uh, that much nicer, I think, goes a long ways in making our products look like high-end products, as um, handcrafted as opposed to homemade. So um, that's my take on it. So I didn't show this, but um, of course I edge-coated the end there as well. Uh, this strap, I'm actually making it for a specific purse, so um, I'll show you. I'm going to top stitch now, and again, um, one of my little things that I do is I don't start at the end and go down and then start here and go down. I want this to look very finished. I want it to look like it's supposed to be um, the edge, um, I don't know. <laughs> How do you put that? Um, I just want it to look finished. I want it just to look like it's supposed to be sewn that way. So when I start sewing, I'm actually going to start um, down a little bit further. And I'm going to start go around and I'm going to come back and then back over that a little bit. I do not back stitch. I just come back over it. So I can, it doesn't really matter, I can just do whatever here. I do have um, an edge foot on here, an edge guide, so um, it helps um, with my stitching as well. So. And this is my industrial. No, 
Now I'm a little close to my hardware here. And I think I'm going to be... Hopefully my stitches aren't too, too crooked there. And one more, I hope. There we go. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to pull it to the back. Hold those so they don't get caught. And I'm just going to go over a couple of stitches. Not going to cut these ones right short. Going to leave some tails there so that this as well, wherever that is, there we go. So I have all of, I'm going to tie these off. I use a little bit of fray check and I actually just kind of um, burn them down, melt them. Um, so that they're flush with the leather. Because it's nylon, it uh, works really well. So my stitches up here aren't perfect. Um, they're not that bad though. I can live with it. So, um, so yeah, there I have it. Um, and again, this is why I start and stop uh, I guess I could have started, stopped a couple stitches back, but that's not a big deal. This is actually going to be folded under anyway um, with some hardware and riveted in. But hey, um, if it can be seen, let's make it as look, look as pretty as possible. So, um, so there you have it. What I have now is I have my short piece um, all top stitched and assembled. I also have my long piece of my adjustable strap. Um, it's all edge coated, top stitched, uh, and it's ready to go. So I'm going to be showing you now how I, um, I have a product that I use. These little guys, um, these are what they call button studs. There's probably other names for them too. I don't know if I can get in there so you can actually see what they look like. Um, as opposed, these are, these do not replace rivets. Um, all they're going to do is they're going to secure the strap, the long strap. Once it's through here, all it does is it secures it from pulling back out. You'll see that um, as I get it assembled. So, But they do take, those little button studs um, do take some other products, some other tools to uh, put them together. These are very like, very much like Chicago screws in that they have a back that screws in and that's what holds it in place. But in order to uh, push your button through here, you have to have a special tool and that is this little handy dandy tool. It has a hole punch and it also has a slot that it does both at the same time. What that does is it it makes the hole and the slot that allows, that gives enough room that you can take this little button stud and push it through. It allows it to open and do that, um, but when it's in there properly, it doesn't allow it to, um, to pull out. Yes, you can do this with a hole punch and an X-Acto knife. Uh, to make that little slit, but I know I'm going to be doing this over and over and over again, so I'm going to have the right tools. You also have to be careful that you have the right size. So I have um, this little punch in two different sizes right now. Um, this one obviously is quite a bit larger. 
meant for a much larger button stud. Uh, if you follow me, you know I'm all about templates. So I don't know if we can, if this will help you see this any better or not. But um, I have a template here. Man, I wish, <laughs> if it wasn't clear, you could see it better. But um, let's see if I can get a little bit of glare so you can actually see the, see the hole. Um, what I have is, I have things measured out. I've taken a piece of my plastic and this is exactly one inch wide. Most of my straps that I'm making are one inch wide. So um, I've used my ruler to cut one inch. I've also measured in half an inch so that this is exactly centered. And I've run my awl so that it scores a mark that is exactly center all the way along here. Then I went and I measured, this first one is one inch, which is just a, random um, number, which is fine. So I just went ahead and uh, made my mark there. Now is where I get really critical. Now from here to my next mark, I want exactly two inches. Then I have one more mark and I, that one is exactly two inches as well. Because I'm using this both to put the button studs in and also to mark where I'm going to punch my holes. So if I have two button uh, two button holes, if I have two button studs, I have to make sure that in order for my strap to be adjustable, um, all my holes have to be exactly two inches apart. Otherwise, um, it won't look right because it. No, oh, how do I explain that? Um, I think you're getting the idea. So in order for my my studs to fit properly into no matter where you put the holes um, everything has to be very exact so um, hopefully that's <laughs> about as clear as mud I guess you'll see when I'm when I'm doing this so what I've done now here um, again I have another little template that I use for marking this is going to hold or this is for my rivets so I've got holes for my rivets and this is going to be for this. So I'm going to put a rivet in here and this is going to hold um, the slider. Now these two holes are actually for my button studs. The distance from the rivet to the first button, that's just whatever I decide I want it to be. But from hole to hole, that has to be two inches. So I used my template laid it on top here, um, used my hole punch and punched exactly, and I used the smallest um, hole in my hole punch and punched those two holes. So now these are actually even ready. Um, I, I'll rivet this in and then these little button hole button studs. I'm really having problems with that today. So I'm going to get that as tight as I possibly can. So there's, there is a slot on the back. It's like a screw. And I'm going to get, oh, I've got oh, poss very possibly cat hair in there. I wonder why, where that comes from. Um, I'm going to take a piece of leather um, and hold on to that because it'll give me enough grip on this. And then I'm going to take my screwdriver and, uh, and tighten that down. So I'm going to do two of those. And then I'm going to move on to the long strap. So I have my rivet in and I have my two button studs done. And because I don't want these to come out um, just to unscrew on their own, uh, I use a little bit of thread lock on here. Now this, the blue stuff um, will allow you, if I needed to take one of these out, even a long time later, um, I still would be able to get it out, but it's, it keeps, it's kind of rubbery, um, leaves kind of a rubbery coating on the threads of your screw. And it just, you could take it out if you needed to. It's not like using crazy glue or something like that, um, but it keeps it from uh, backing out on its own. 
So the next part is going to be my long strap. So I'm going to actually, I'm, I'm just gonna, uh, it's, it's very hard for me to get the proper um, perspective, I guess, with the camera here. So um, I'm going to mark, I'm just gonna be using my template. It's really important. The slot um, has to be toward the bottom because um, when something pulls on this, um, where, there we go. Okay, so um, with this on top, get in the camera here. Um, if the pull has to be toward the hole, not the slot. If it pulled the, the slot part, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, if it pulled on the slot part, you'd be defeating the purpose. You want it to, to be in the hole. And that's where you want the tension. So um, that's what I'm gonna be really careful of. I'm going to mark where I'm going to put my holes and then um, like mark for the distance and all of that. But I'm going to be really careful in the direction that I have my tool. So I have to kind of have you to the side here because uh, <laughs> my hammer or my mallet is going to be in the way. So I have, I have three holes done already and I'm just going to do a fourth, fourth one. I think that's probably going to be enough. Um, I may change my mind later. But, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my template and I'm going to line up the holes that I already have. Make sure everything's even. And if I was gonna do a couple more holes, of course I could slide this up and as long as I'm matching to one of them, I'm good. Now I'm gonna take my little tool and because I have the slot and everything in the template, I know that it is perfectly straight and that is something for me, again, that's very important. I don't want those, the slots here. I don't want them to one side or the other. I want them all very nice and straight. It just looks so much more professional. So now there's gonna be a little bang in here, but um, so I'm using, my template is on there right now. I'm just gonna give it a couple of, of good wax here. And you'll see that it has marked where I'm gonna put my hole. So I'm gonna make sure that I line everything up again with it. I use a mallet, not a hammer. Um, again, well, this is what they would call a dead blow hammer or, or a mallet. This one has uh, lead beads inside. What it does is it takes the shock. Um, it absorbs the shock of hammering on the metal. If you use a hammer, um, eventually it gets very, very, diff very hard on your tools. Um, the vibration and the shock of hammering on them all the time makes the metal very brittle. So um, the mallet um, does a really good job. So that's what we're going to stick with. So, so here I have um, my holes and the slots, everything, uh, it's going to work just perfectly. I hope. <laughs> so Essentially, what's going to happen here is this gets slid through and those buttons just hold it from, um, as a shoulder strap, just from being able to, to pull out, to slide through this slider. So the, the last thing that I'm going to put on here is, I should have had this all ready to go as well. Um, these are strap ends and these are so pretty. So of course this is still in the plastic and everything, but again, it's gunmetal. It matches. And I try not to take everything off of my hardware uh, as I'm working on it, just so it doesn't get so scratched. But uh, what's going to end up happening, this is, I'm going to put a little bit of glue on here as well. And um, then there's a couple of screws that hold it in. But that's going to finish that off. I mean, I just think that that is so pretty. So, um, so yeah, so that's all there is. Um, working with leather is a little bit different, but it doesn't have to be scary. Um, 
it uh, with the right tools again um, such a big advocate of having the right tools so um, good luck to you if you have any questions just ask